I've been asked to do a video on pen turning on the ShopSmith, and I don't have time for that. However, I've had two identical questions in the last two weeks from people who are using their ShopSmith to turn a pen or something very, very small, and they're encountering a problem. So I thought I'd use this moment to talk a little bit about the solution to that and a little bit about pen mandrels. And we'll circle back around and actually do a pen turning video at some point. Lots of people have done that. But let's talk specifically about this challenge on the ShopSmith. So this is the issue. Uh, the, the question is, they're using a pen mandrel. And we'll talk about how these mandrels mount here in just a moment. But using a pen mandrel with the tool rest set where they want it positioned, some people are not able to get close enough without running into something like the chuck or running out of space. They, they may be way over here. And, and not able to turn the full piece. That I certainly wouldn't be comfortable using a skew from this side if this is where this is where I was coming in from. So what folks may not be thinking about is the fact that I have the ability to move the headstock over and extend the quill. So with the quill loose and now the headstock loose, I can extend that quill out. Let's lock the headstock in place. Lock the quill in place, and we can get rid of that handle. Let's move it to the side. And now you can see uh, I have quite a bit more motion here, not with the tool rest sitting right there. In fact, that brings up another problem. You know, having a mandrel mounted in my drill chuck does put my drill chuck in the way sometimes. But anyway, you can see that I can go way over here now if I was turning something other than a pen. So I have a couple options for mounting a mandrel in this machine. Uh, there are mandrels that are sold that have machined into the end of that mandrel uh, the 532nd socket. So you can just plug it directly into the end of your quill and tighten it down with a set screw. Um, I don't have one of those yet. I guess I should get one. Um, on a lot of folks' lathes, they're using a mandrel that has a Morse taper on the end. Uh, so for my mini lathes here, I have a number two Morse taper version of this. I have a number one Morse taper version of this, and it just goes right into the end of the lathe. But on our ShopSmith, we don't have that ability. So one of the things that you can do, if you happen to own it, and if your mandrel is a quarter inch diameter, you can use the quarter inch router chuck. So let's uh, let's pull this off of here real quick, and I'll show you how you can do that. And I really like this approach. For several reasons. Now you'll notice with this quarter inch chuck i have a couple very very small set screws but we'll stick our mandrel in here and we would tighten that down with the appropriate hex wrench and one good idea would be to grind a couple flats or a single flat onto your mandrel so that when you're doing that it's actually biting into something and uh, it's not rotating, creating a scar all the way around that mandrel. Now, again, I can extend my quill. Line that up here. And you can see the advantage of that is it allows me to get even closer. And I don't run the risk of running into that large gear on the chuck. <laughs> It's that easy. So it's that easy. There are several mandrels available. I'll link to a few. Uh, also, if you're sticking around, let me also suggest if you haven't visited MyGrowthRings.com, it's actually a thing. Go over there, sign up for a free membership if you like, and join the conversation. It's very much like a Facebook experience, only private without ads, and we'd love to have you over there. All right, make it a great day.